Ready? Okay, you're going. Hi, this is uh, Matthew Suckey from Faith Award Baptist Church. You know, I'm making a video here about soul winning tips, some of the stuff I've learned from going out soul winning from back in West Virginia, and also some things I've learned since I've been in Arizona. And I just want to give you some tips that might help you out when you get soul winning. Uh, one tip I have is um, when you get somebody saved going soul winning, you know, ask them is there's somebody else in the house I can talk to? Maybe your sister, or your brother, or your dad, or your mom. Or uh, I mean, I've had a lot of examples where I got somebody saved. Ask, can I talk to your child? And the next person that you talk to is more likely to get saved because you've already talked to someone in their house, so they're more likely to listen to you. I've, I've noticed a lot of examples. I get somebody saved. I ask, hey, do you have a mom or dad I can talk to? And then I get them saved too. Because, I mean, we're trying to knock every door at Faith Forward Baptist Church. Now, let's say you knock every door and, you, and there's always somebody home. You're still not talking to everybody because there's people in that house that you're not going to talk to. So, I mean, if you ask, hey, is there someone else in my house, in your house I can talk to, then, you know, maybe you have an opportunity to get somebody saved that, you know, you, you're never going to get a chance to talk to. We want to talk to everyone we can. So, I mean, it's worth, you know, asking, you know, is there someone else I can talk to? You know, a lot of times they're more likely to get saved than if you just go to the next door and knock somewhere. I see lots of people get saved that way. Um, another soul winning tip I have is to basically explain the basics. And what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of things we kind of take for granted that people understand about Jesus dying on the cross and being resurrected and, you know, how the Trinity is true and how Jesus is perfect. You know, I did not believe Jesus was perfect. You know, I did not know that growing up. When I got saved, I was not aware that, that Jesus was perfect. And, you know, a lot of people are not aware, you know, that Jesus has been resurrected. You would be surprised how many people, you know, when you ask them, you know, have you heard what happened three days after Jesus died? They do not know that Jesus has been resurrected. That's why we need to explain these things to them. Some people don't know what the word sin is. You say, how could someone not know what the word sin is? Everybody knows that. Well, you, you hear Joel Osteen on Larry King Live saying, you know, that, you know, I don't use the word sin. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's why people don't know it, because, you know, people aren't talking about it. So we got to explain these things to them. You know, one of the things I do after I explain Romans 3.23 and 3.10, I say, you know, we've sinned, you know, we've fallen short, but, you know, the Bible says Jesus was perfect. It says, in him is no sin. So, I mean, I, I say something like that just to show how he is perfect. Because, I mean, a lot of people, they don't realize that. I didn't realize that before I was saved. And then if someone's not sure about Jesus being resurrected, you know, I ask them after I've gone through a lot, then I go to John 2, 19 through 22 and just explain that so they can see how Jesus was resurrected. A lot of people do not realize that. So, I mean, we take things for granted. We need, we need to make sure we take the time to explain things that they may not know that we kind of just take for granted what they do know. You know, another tip I have for soul winning is to quote the verse word for word in the King James perfectly. I mean, it kind of, it's a pet peeve of mine when I go soul winning with someone and they kind of just paraphrase something. If you're going to quote it, quote it right. I mean, they have to hear the word of God to be saved to begin with. It says being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. So when we quote stuff, we need to make sure it's correct. Like word for word, I'll say God was manifest in the flesh. Word for word, I show how God was came down in human flesh. It needs to be word for word correct. I mean, we quote something like John 3.16 or John 3.36, you know, not just make it like say, he that believeth on the Son hath eternal life, you know, say it exactly like the Bible says. It has a lot more power. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. I mean, it's, it's the word of God. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So quote it exactly word for word correct. correctly. There's a lot more power behind it. If you're going to quote it, then, you know, let's try to make sure we quote it correctly. You know, another tip I have for soul winning is, you know, the Bible says a man that is inheriting after the first and second admonition reject. Basically, when you're going soul winning, it says that in Titus uh, 3.10, I believe. And when you're going soul winning, and you get into it, you shouldn't be getting in arguments when you're going soul winning. If someone doesn't want to listen, go and knock the next door. And you may say, well, yeah, that makes sense. It's an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing. I mean, I think any soul warning gets tied into that sometimes because you, you want to get this person saved. You're thinking, man, if I explain it, they'll get it saved. But the thing is, you know, so many times you run into situations where you get in an argument with someone, and if you keep talking to them and arguing with them, there's people that you're not going to get saved that you can get saved later on that day. But we've all run into that over and over and over again. You can spend, some people are willing to argue with you for an hour and a half, but it's a waste of time. There's people a couple doors down, maybe the next door over, who's going to get saved right now if you talk to them. But that person that you're arguing with, they're not going to get saved. The Bible says a man that is inheriting after the first and second admonition reject. It's not always an easy thing to do, but it's something we have to do. Now, there's, it's also kind of on the line sometimes. If someone isn't quite sure about it, but they're listening, you might not want to just quit talking to them. But if someone is just saying, I don't believe that. You know, I, I talked to a Jehovah's Witness a few days ago, and I showed them what the Bible says. I said, you know, the Bible shows that Jesus is God after I've gone through the gospel, and I thought he might get saved. 
And he said, yeah, that's what the Bible says. I was like, but you don't believe that, do you? He's like, no, I don't believe that. You know what? It is a waste of time to keep talking to him. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. If you've shown it to him in the Bible and they reject it, just go on to the next door. You know, the fifth tip I have on soul winning is, you know, a lot of times, you know, ask a parent if you can talk to their kids. You know, maybe the parent is busy, but maybe they'll let you talk to their kids, give them a Bible story or something. I know with Hispanic people, they're very open to letting you talk to their children. But, you know, a lot of kids are more open to getting saved than adults. I mean, they, people go to this wordless book where you don't give them any Bible verses. You know, you don't have to water it down for kids. All you got to do is explain what sin is, explain what a gift is, and just go through it and, and just explain it just like you explain it to anybody else. They're more likely to get saved because they haven't... It talks about having the faith of a little child. I mean, they don't have all these false philosophies crammed into their heads. So we don't need to water it down for the kids, but, you know, ask the parents, you know, can I talk to your child? You know, just tell them a Bible story. Just give them the Bible story and obviously give them the gospel. To give them that Bible story, make it kind of entertaining, but just go through those same verses, quote them word for word, and just explain it to the kid. Because, you know, there's a, kids are very much more open to getting sick.